Today we're going to build our very own ecosystem, and I did about 5 minutes of the tutorial so that should be more than enough to make some evolution happen. And that's all going to start with seaweed, the congo fern, and the java fern, which seems to like an outcropping. Luckily, I'm pretty sure I know what an outcropping is. It probably wants to be close to the surface, and I don't know how deep this water is, but we might have hit the roof already. It appears we hit the roof already. But these ferns are definitely going to like their outcropping, it's going to go all the way out of the water gonna love it up there. Now I in fact can't see out there so I'm just gonna assume it's gonna thrive and we're gonna put a little bit on the way down as well. Each time I do this it is costing me a little bit of evolution points but as they start to you know do their thing I'm going to make evolution points. So while we're at it I'm gonna put this leafy bad boy the congo fern about mid shaft and that's gonna grow up and down to play with its friends the java fern and then a few down here they'll just kind of spread amongst each other. And then aside from that I guess it's just some good old-fashioned boring seaweed. Again we're gonna put that mid shaft and then we're gonna put some somewhere out here as soon as we get some more life points. Uh, hopefully these idiots start to spread because we do need more points. So far, it seems like a lot of things are just dying pretty quickly. Wait, we have some growth. Something's moving on, so let's get some seaweed down because I'm pretty sure seaweed's just gonna grow anywhere. It doesn't discriminate. While we're at it, if we want to be true, uh, evolutionists, we need to see what's at the bottom of this place too. We need a good diversity of life. I read that in the tutorial. So we'll just dig a nice little pit down to the bottom where we're gonna get a good diversity of all sorts of crap. But down here, we're gonna get some kind of variety of that guy, this guy, and this guy. There'll definitely be a strange variety down here, but that's exactly what we want. And the shaft is doing well. Mm, never mind, I'm pretty sure everything I put on that literally died already. To be fair, how was I supposed to know things couldn't live up there? It said it wanted to be on an outcropping. So while we're at it, uh, let's get some of these Anubias because they like darkness and I happen to know where there's a pretty deep hole. Then we're going to take some Amazon sword plant because that sounds cool. And since I get to unlock something else, we'll take a pioneer plant because these don't really need any help to grow and i kind of need plants that are self-starters because if they can't do it on their own uh they're screwed so whatever this one was was the one that liked the darkness so we're gonna put a few of these whoops down here and they should have lots of darkness and then i'm gonna sprinkle in some of these other ones kind of systematically around the area that way everything gets a little bit of a chance to commingle grass whack pond weed literally sounds like something i would name and that's not a compliment but so far things are starting to take off pretty good let's move up and kind of see the expanse of what we created okay we can't get that far but it's looking pretty leafy overall. Even my murder hole is starting to look pretty good. And I'm pretty sure we got the plant health we need for some kind of animals. So we're going to start off with some basic uh, foragers. The name pretty much stands for itself. Uh, so we just plant a few of those in the appropriate areas where things are healthy enough to support them. They are pretty expensive though, considering they cost 10 uh, evolution points and I have 33 total. I think it's probably wise to add probably five different kinds of foragers that are going to evolve into their own, uh, you know, people one day. And that's going to include some deep sea morons. We're going to have something evolve down here that's probably not going to be super happy. It's not going to let me do that yet until we get some more leaves. There we go. I think we got our five different species of foragers running around. We're starting to see them floating around like this little guy. He's swimming sideways and I couldn't be prouder. But since we do have five different species of foragers thriving, we better introduce a predator. That way no one gets too comfortable. And I've unleashed a predator somewhere right here. So he's gonna have lots to eat. This might be him now. He's just a little guy, but he'll get there. Why does this happen no matter what game I play? This thing looks like someone microwaved a turtle. And you, sir, are swimming backwards for some reason. But I do have to wonder how big they can get. Luckily for us, we do have a creature editor. So I can start to pull on the dimensions of things to kind of, you know, see what happens. This is how evolution works. You just kind of keep pulling on things until something breaks or something works. And when it does inevitably break, you start again learning what you did wrong the first time. That looks like a creature that would survive in my world. Gonna go ahead and call whatever this is hopeless. There's the picture of it so we know how to find it again. This is definitely gonna evolve into a person one day, I could already tell. And it's time to choose more food sources. So curly leaf pondweed. Uh, seagrass and big leaf hydrilla. I'm just going by names at this point because I'm not going to read all that. Look how happy this one is. Come back, you. You can't be this happy in my world. Oh, never mind. I was looking at his smile wrong. Never mind. As I was saying, I'm just going to go around and sprinkle all these new plants when I find them into my world. Curly leaf pondweed. Can never have too many of those. Still can't get anything to grow on the shaft, and I'm very disappointed about that. I worked so hard to make this. Maybe if I start at the bottom, they'll have friends and then they can help each other grow. Now we're getting somewhere. We can get mushrooms, red starfish, and green starfish. I'm not really sure what starfish are good for, 
but it doesn't matter. We just need a million of them. That's all I know. I don't know what kind of conditions I like, and also I don't care. We're gonna spend a lot of money on starfish. And they told me I didn't know how evolution works. But keeping up with their obvious Christmas theme, we're gonna add some green starfishes out there too. Would they look it better in the plants? We can't see them if they're in the plants though. If I can't see my creatures, there's no point in having them. So the mushroom seems to like darkness plus two times deaths. Well, I do have a murder hole where there's probably a lot of death going on. But let's see if we can get some down there. It does kind of seem to be accepting some mushrooms down here. So we're going to build a few on the way up. They're definitely going to like a dark spot. So they can have the murder hole. Look at the map. It's just a bunch of plants and then this is a sea of red starfish. And for some reason, there's a bunch of things that look like this over on the edge of the map. I'm not sure why they're over here by themselves. But someone definitely microwave these things. Congratulations. You're the forager that is four miles from any source of food. Maybe this would actually be a good opportunity to give these guys over here some food. Uh, normally the creatures go around the food. But in this instance, for some reason, the creatures are growing wherever they want. So I'm going to add some food down for them and hopefully they'll thrive all by themselves over here. I just want to see what they turn into next. And they're going to have a rough go of life. Well, things are somehow clearly thriving because we're up to 300 evolution points. So we're going to figure out what it is we can get next. We can get more colors of starfish and they seem to interact with plankton. So let's get that. They seem like a package deal anyways. Why do all my fish swim upside down? I didn't do anything wrong. But curiously, I also didn't do anything right. I'm going to add lots of plankton because I assume lots of things eat them. And we should probably also add more predators. We've got a lot of uh, creatures swimming around rather leisurely. And I don't want anything to be that comfortable. The way I see it is the more predators we have, the more of like a biological arms race we're going to have. And that's going to cause things to evolve very quickly just based on necessity. So let's begin a carnivore probably right there. And then an apex carnivore. Lovely. We're going to put one of these maybe over here. And good luck everyone. And that is going to be one happy carnivore because there is a lot of creatures here to eat. I made them all this nice grassy area and they all abandoned it. Though that might not have been on purpose. I'm not sure they can really control where it is they're going. Next on the fun unlock list, we're going to get red tube sponges, which like outcroppings and the barrel sponge, which also like outcropping. I didn't realize I could change the size of my brush until now. So we're going to do that and make like a kind of outcropping. I assume what the game means is an outcropping. Whoops, didn't mean to do it like that, but I'm not going to try very hard at this. I'm going to do a bunch of this and put a bunch of crap all over it. So we're doing something right and then we're going to add a bit of uh, these guys which I think also like this. So far so good. Things seem to be liking that and I'm maybe even going to add a few other plants to help enjoy this beautiful rock. And there we go. Where's my reward for doing something amazing? I feel like everything in my ocean is just suffering endlessly. And I really couldn't be happier about it. Like, what is this thing? Someone just stretched out its legs and pointed at them straight. And I didn't even do this. But I can also boost a creature that I like. So if I find, say, an apex carnivore, or even just a regular carnivore, I might boost the life out of it. That way you can consume everything else here. I just have no idea what the carnivores are, if they even lived long enough. Oh, that's a predator. Stretchy boy is a predator. Not necessarily a good one, but he tries real hard. So let's give him a boost. He's boosted. He's boosted again. How many times can we boost him? I'm going to put my auto clicker on and boost him all the way through 200 points. Couldn't have found a better way to spend my points. The game is starting to lag pretty hard, so this is clearly a good idea. And we're out. It's just a massive predator energy at this point. He doesn't look any different, but I definitely boosted him really, really hard. So hopefully he does something fun. Oh, I think I understand what they meant by boosted now. It doesn't boost this particular creature. It boosts the entire species. So now the ocean is full of... Uh, Loppy predators. That would explain why the game started to lag so hard. Hmm. Might have overdone it on the predators. I feel like a lot of other creatures are not going to have a good time with this. But we'll see who wins in the end. Ultimately, I don't care. This one could almost pass for a shark. I think that's what they were going for before they turned into me and just completely annihilated it. So apparently unleashing a thousand predators into your world is actually a good thing because I'm back to 166 points already. I thought it destroyed the entire ecosystem, but I still have time. So I'm just going to start taking these in order, uh, unless I happen to find something more fun. But all of that wasn't particularly exciting to me. And I'm going to start a new little patch of weirdos over here. And this new little patch will eventually grow into something. I'll even start some creatures growing there for whatever that's going to be worth. Never mind, the eco health is so bad that nothing is ready to grow yet. It's the weirdest thing whenever I come into this area of the ocean, the game legs really hard for some reason. I can't actually tell if there's more or less of these things at this point. I just know there's a lot of them. And 
genetic disease. Well, that's not going to be good. I'm no geneticist, but I assume if something is wrong with one of them, something is probably wrong with all of them. And there are a lot of them. It feels uncomfortable swimming through them all. The game doesn't love this one little bit. These guys are still hanging out over here. I don't think they've changed very much at all. If they have, it's kind of hard to tell. All right, well, since this light speed evolution still isn't fast enough for me, I've doubled the speed because I need to see more changes. I just spent the last few minutes going around, uh, basically figuring out what can improve the eco health anywhere I go, generally putting down things that seem like they're gonna help. And suddenly I have 280 points. This one couldn't really be any worse if I tried. And again, I had basically nothing to do with that. I just laid down a bunch of plants and this happened. So while we're at it, we're probably going to get some giant kelp because that sounds like fun. Open brain coral because also fun. And adding this giant kelp is 150 eco health. I would be stupid not to put these everywhere. There's probably a downside to this, but I don't care. I see big numbers and I do it. And they really are very big. I could navigate just by those things alone. So I'm going to lay those everywhere over here. It's not the most methodical or prettiest, but boy is it functional. We're up to almost 500 evolution points now. Spiky balls of doom. And they add plus 25 eco health. So we're going to have a lot of sea urchins around the world. They seem to really like it around these outer edges near the giant kelp. So I'm just going to put them there for now. And they get so big so fast. Look at all those spikes. We can even put a few on this shaft. We could have a spiky shaft. And the sea anemones seem to add like a hundred eco health depending on where they're placed. At least down in the murder hole they were. Not sure why they're so good down there, but the first few definitely made a big difference. So after placing a million anemones, I realize we haven't really started a lot of new creatures in a while. So let's see what happens if we unleash some new creatures in this thriving little world of ours. And I feel like we have too many creatures over here because adding a predator is going to be a 50 eco health boost. So we're clearly overpopulated. I just can't really find a home for these predators yet. There we go. Now we just need to wait a few minutes and we'll have even more of these morons wandering around my oceans. Then we're just going to keep on adding more of these until some something new comes up that I find interesting. I'm gonna add a lot. Plus 120 eco health. By now a lot of our new species have probably all grown up but it's a little hard to tell uh, which ones they are because they all look like kind of stupid blobs. Next we're gonna unlock green uh, acropora, blue acropora, and then brain coral because that actually improves with age. Plus one times age. I mean, we just put it in places and it's going to be zero to start, but by the time it's 900 years old, it's going to be a plus 900. So we'll just kind of call this a biological investment. Gonna put a few down. You know what? Let's use the auto clicker again. Auto clickers are perfect for evolution games. In a few thousand years, this is going to be the healthiest damn ecosystem in the universe. Is that all part of the same creature? That's magnificent. And believe it or not, this upside down moron is actually a very dangerous predator. I'm starting to have my doubts about the long-term viability of these creatures. Okay, well, what's next? You know what? Just for fun, I want to put some giant kelp out here because standing alone, they do a 250 eco boost health. So at 250 per plant, that's going to make a big difference if I put a whole bunch somewhere out here where they can live all by themselves for a while, except for up there where it's probably too high. I think it's once again time to use the auto clicker. We're just going to put a whole bunch of these down because I can't see these not being a benefit. Clearly, my plan is working because as fast as I can plant these things, I'm actually making points back. So they were clearly making points off every one of these I plant. And it's going to change the entire way this whole thing looks because these things are so big. Hey, look, this one actually has teeth. That's the first creature I've seen with kind of formed eyes and teeth. They're such majestic, graceful swimmers. And laying down all that giant, whatever it's called, really made a difference because now it looks like a forest down there instead of, you know, barren floor. I mean, why? Even just randomly, why? How does this happen? Do they just keep adding things onto it? That is like something I would do, but it would have no logical purpose whatsoever. They just kept adding and adding and adding things onto this poor creature. But I think now would probably be the perfect time to boost another creature. Particularly this forager, basically food for predators. So we're going to pause it for a second. And that way it can hold still for long enough for me to click on it 200 times. Okay, I'm not really sure what happened. I wasn't really paying attention. And suddenly we went up to like 800 evolution points. So now instead of 200 of these, we're going to get a thousand. And there we go. We're out of points. I'm a little hesitant to unpause it because I can already hear my computer fan. But we're just going to try and unpause it and see if the game can handle this. So far, it cannot. I think we literally turned this fish into a black hole because that's what it looks like. And so far, nothing is happening in a big hurry, but I've got time if you guys do. I've officially been sitting here for almost 20 minutes, watching a frame pass by 
every little while. It's starting to feel like the game is mostly broken. I'm a little scared to click on anything and move around as much as I want to. Because as soon as I do, I get the little blue circle and the game has died. I guess this is why you don't use an auto clicker in an evolution game. 